This is Seven National News and in our top story, the UA Vice President, Prime Minister and ruler of Dubai, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, has congratulated the UA national football team on defeating Japan on Thursday as a part of the FIFA World Cup 2018 competitions. In a tweet on his Twitter account, he said, Congratulations to the Whites. Thanks to our children and coach Mahidi Al Ali. May the people of the UAE always live in joy and victory, God willing. His Highness Sheikh Hazza bin Zayed Al Nahyan, the Deputy Chairman of the Abu Dhabi Executive Council, also congratulated the team who defeated Japan 2 1 in Tokyo in Group B of the 2018 World Cup Asian Qualifiers. The UA team were set to return home on Friday to prepare for the final qualifiers where they will host Australia on Tuesday at the Mohammed bin Zayed Stadium over in Abu Dhabi City. The Supreme Court of Saudi Arabia has declared September the 11th as Arafat Day, with the first day of Eid al-Adha falling on Monday, September the 12th. The UA's official news agency WAM reported the sighting of the Eid al-Adha Du al-Hajjah crescent, with most Islamic countries detecting the crescent on Thursday, September the 1st, the same day of the solar eclipse. Based on the moon sighting, the month of Du al-Hajjah begins on Saturday, September the 3rd, and therefore September the 11th will be the day of Arafah and September the 12th, the first day of Eid al-Adha. There is no official word as yet on holidays for the public and private sectors of the UAE. However, reports do suggest that private sector employees will most likely have holidays from September the 9th through to the 13th and then resume work on Wednesday, September the 14th. The Emirates Red Crescent is planning to implement a number of reconstruction projects in various areas that were hit by recent floods over in Sudan, which left thousands of families homeless. The ERC said that the first phase of the reconstruction program will cover vital sectors such as housing, health and education in the most affected areas in the Kasala state in the east, Khartoum and the River Nile state in the north of Sudan. The move comes as 13 out of 18 states struck by devastating floods were facing a dire humanitarian situation. A delegation of the ERC met in Khartoum with Dr. Othman Jafar, the Secretary General of the Sudanese Red Crescent, and also Dr. Al Wathek Abdul Rahman, the Acting Director General of the Sanad Charity Foundation, in order to discuss arrangements to implement the projects. Three new lanes have been opened on the Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Road as a part of a widening project that's according to the Road and Transport Authority. The opening happened on Friday, which means that there will now be a total of six lanes from Al Yalis Road to Jebel Ali Lahbab Roundabout in the direction of Abu Dhabi. Nabil Mohammed Sali, the Director of Roads at the RTA's Traffic and Roads Agency, was quoted saying that completing this sector of the project will significantly contribute to smooth traffic flow, especially for vehicles coming from the existing Al Huda roundabout towards Abu Dhabi. He added that this is the first phase of the Al Yalias interchange project, which comprises of four phases to be completed by the end of November this year. And the Dubai Taxi Corporation, which operates under the Road and Transport Authority, has signed an MOU that will help enforce child safety on the roads. The Memorandum of Understanding was signed with Hyundai Juma Al Majid to ensure the availability of child safety seats in taxis by Dr. Yusuf Mohammed Al Ali, the CEO of the Dubai Taxi Corporation, as well as Axel Dreyer, the president of the Hyundai Motor Group in the UAE. Al Ali stated on the occasion that the MOU will see Hyundai Motor Group provide child safety seats to DTC's taxi cabs in support of community initiatives, as well as for the deployment of Hyundai Genesis vehicles for use in DTC's limousine fleet in order to probe customer experience about these types of vehicles. He added that the MOU signals the intent of Dubai Taxi Corporation to forge strategic partnerships, enhance customer experiences and transform the corporate. 
Some of the young creative minds of the UA had the chance to showcase their productions on the large screen over the weekend as Dubai Mall hosted the short film festival. After completing their summer camp, the aspiring filmmakers finally had the chance to walk down the red carpet and celebrate their hard work. According to the organisers, the summer camp, now in its second edition, aimed to encourage young filmmakers to make the most out of their summer holiday by gathering everything that they'd learnt during the camp and reflecting it through the quality of their films. Over three and a half weeks, the programme welcomed children and teenagers to experience the art of filmmaking firsthand, where they were taught basic principles of cinematography to produce their own movies from script to screen. All of the short films were shot at the Dubai Mall with the help of professional filmmaking coaches before being publicly screened at the real cinemas. A total of six awards were presented across three categories for both seniors and juniors based on their direction, screenplay and production. According to the participants, the programme helped strengthen their appreciation and understanding of cinema and also celebrate their efforts along with their friends on the red carpet. We started this last year with the idea of giving students an opportunity to express their creativity and get some practical experience in making films. The young people have so many creative ideas and this was a perfect opportunity for them to have a chance to express these ideas and see if a job in the media might be in their future. Film industry in UAE, it's starting to pick up with a lot more films being screened here and local productions. And it's good to be able to give back with the youth, um, have them involved from a young age because it's something where I think in the future, the UAE is going to be a much bigger part of the Hollywood and Bollywood uh, and Arabic films uh, coming forward. So it's a good start for real cinemas and Emar Entertainment to be a part of that from such a young age. Usually people uh, either do horror movies or comedy movies, but ours is a mix of both. It's like a ghost who is friendly, but then uh, the people over there get scared that it's a ghost. At the last, they get to know that they, uh, the ghost is friendly. We made a story on social media. So basically we talk about like how uh, social media has taken over us humans and we post everything on social media just to show off. And I think this is, good, this is a really good, uh, sorry, this is a really good story to show because we want to like tell people that not don't post everything on social media because you also have your personal life. So it's just basically for raising awareness. And finally this evening, fashionistas in Dubai who attended the fashion show Devalicious over the weekend got a chance to meet a Bollywood celebrity, Sophie Chowdhury, who was back in Dubai especially for the event. The popular two-day exhibition hosted an invite-only fashion show for the first time, which was attended by over 50 people, who not only got a chance to check out the latest collection by designers, but also were fortunate enough to get up close and personal with the Bollywood fashion icon. The 34-year-old British film actress and singer has been quite active recently in the Bollywood scene and is also promoting the launch of her new single, which she describes as a Sanjeet anthem. Apart from being starstruck, the fashion show caught the attention of many designers as it featured autumn collections of over 90 exhibitors. The one-day event featured collections of popular designers, which included Nita Lula, Falguni and Shane Peacock, Sunakshi Raj, Nishka Lula and Babita Malkan, to name just a few. Well, uh, it's lovely to be the Bollywood showstopper for Divalicious this year. I think CBSC has put together a fantastic event, lots of wonderful designers. And I was a showstopper for my friend Sonakshi Raj, who's a fabulous, young, cool designer. Um, I love the concept of Divalicious. It goes very much with my image of being a bit of a diva. And uh, I'm also here in Dubai, which is one of my favorite cities in the world, not just for this fashion event, but because my brand new song released a couple of days ago called Sajan Mein Achungi. Um, so it was a perfect place to premiere for Dubai. And I really hope that everybody sees the song, enjoys it, and dances to it. Divalicious has been uh, into existence for the last five years. 
and we have we are the only exhibition in the world with an international presence in nine cities such as Dubai, Mumbai, Nairobi, Sri Lanka, Singapore, Durban, Johannesburg and uh, our aim is to now launch an online store www.devalicious.com for the simple reason that we um, are associated with extremely strong Lakme Fashion Week designers right from Neeta Lula to Falguni and Shen Peacock to Nishka Lula, Babita Malkani, Swa, Sonakshi Raj and uh, uh, why not have them in our online portal as well.